Good morning, good afternoon, whatever time you're connected, you're welcome to the nugget for the week. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I give you glory. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity. Holy Spirit, over to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Welcome again to our nugget for the week. This this week, the Holy Spirit has inspired. I'm going to be reading from the book of Mark 4. Mark 4, and it's titled, When the Storm Arises. When the storm arises, what are you supposed to do? Mark 4 from verse 35. On the same day when evening had come, we go through evening of our lives. What is the evening of our, of our lives? When things are dry. When things seems you are the only person. When things seems everything is dark around you. He said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, he took them along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. I'm reading from the New King James Version. And a great white windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. We're going to stop there. Now, my brother, my sister, there are three facets of our lives. That is three areas where we face storm. Number one, is either you're coming out from a storm, number one, or you're about to enter a storm, number two, or you just finished succeeding a storm, or we can say you just, you just became victorious in a storm. The truth of the matter is that we'll face storm in our lives. Our storm comes in different times. Our storm comes in different facets. So Jesus Christ told us, he said, we should be of good cheer. He has overcome every storm, overcome every tribulation. So if you're a child of God, don't feel that you've sinned or you've done anything wrong. That's why you're going through what you're going through. No. Storms are made, are made to make us build our faith. If you read further in that Bible passage, the Lord told him and said, why don't you have faith? So we go through certain things in our lives because God wants to build our faith. He wants, to, he wants us to depend totally on him. So my brother, my sister, in this new week, I don't know what storm you're facing. Probably you're facing a storm right now or you're about to enter a storm or you just finished a storm. The reality and the truth of it is that you are not alone. The Lord Almighty is there. The disciples were afraid. They said, are you not? What is happening? King David also faced a storm in his life. When he came back from war, they find out that everything about him had been plundered. That even the people surrounding him, they were about to stone him. In the book of Second Samuel. And you know what the Lord told him? He said, pursue. He made an inquiry. The Lord told him, pursue, overtake, and you shall surely recover all. So once you're passing through a storm, what do you do? Number one, go back to the Holy Spirit. You know what the disciples did? Even though they were fearful, even, if, even though they hadn't recognized that Jesus Christ is with them in the boat, literally, because in verse 40, 41, they said, who can this be? But the point is that they knew that they had somebody that they could run to. So the first thing is for you to go back to the Lord. Ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what should I do in the storm? You know, sometimes you go through a storm and you think that the Lord is quiet. Or you might think that the Lord is not answering. I'm telling you, my brother, my sister, the Lord is not quiet. He's not silent. God hears our prayers. The Bible says in the book of Second Chronicles that the eyes of the Lord go to and fro. Coming strong for those that put their trust in him. When you put your trust in you, God will never leave you. The Bible says in the book of Psalms that, ah, he says, since, since I was born, now I'm getting old. I've never seen the children of God forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. God never leaves his own. The Bible also tells us that every numbers of our hair, the Lord knows everything. That he feeds the ravens, talk more of us, that he, the mother could forget, but he... Jehovah will never forget us. So once you have a relationship with the Lord Almighty, put your mind at rest. If you are passing through a storm now, ask the Holy Spirit for the divine prescription to ask him and say, what should I do? But don't just answer it on your own. Don't seek help from humans because human beings that you are seeking help from are also passing through a storm or they, are, or they just finished a storm. But sometimes when you you know sometimes the lord leads leads us as a, a as a vessel so when you ask the holy spirit sometimes the holy spirit will tell you join your faith with someone you know because our faith one shall chase a thousand two shall chase ten thousand so there is nothing wrong in having a prayer partner in having a mentor that you can talk to and say this is what i'm going through because such individual might have passed through that storm so when somebody has passed through the storm the person is able to relate with you and tell you 
my sister, my brother, calm down. Don't worry. This is what I did. And what you need to do is pray. Sometimes you will fast about it. So, my brother, my sister, in this new week, paraventure you are passing through a storm now. And you are thinking the Lord Almighty is quiet. He's not quiet. It's to build your faith. Sometimes the Lord will, will, it will, it will look as if he's quiet. He's watching you. His eyes is on you. And he's not, never going to put you in trouble. He will never allow you to sink in the boat of life never and then for that person that you are not going through any of those things or oh, i don't have any problem always know that that situation you are in right now that everything is going well for you always remember that there's an adversary that spoils testimonies so you might say oh i don't have any problem i don't have this just always be close to the holy spirit consistently so in this new week my brother my sister i've come to talk to that person that is passing through his tongue right now and you're thinking that the lord is quiet the lord is not that you are praying your prayer and it seems that your prayer is not going anywhere your prayer is actually being answered the lord is just building your faith stay focused focus on the holy spirit ask the holy spirit if the holy spirit leads you to someone talk to the person that Please, this is what I'm passing through. And the Lord will send helpers to you. But always remember that the Lord will never leave you alone in the storm of life. For that, my brother, my sister, if you're passing through the storm of life and you don't have Jesus, there is danger. Because what happens is that there are devourers around outside that boat. Once you are in the boat of life and Jesus is in the boat of your life, you've got nothing to worry about or about all the sharks and all the devourers that are waiting to to bring somebody out of the boat. So we have those sharks, spiritual sharks, that wants you to come out from that boat so they're able to attack. Because as long as Jesus Christ is in the boat of your life, no one can touch you. So what do you do? You need to surrender your life to Jesus. Ask the Lord and say, Father, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. Please come into the boat of my life. Come into the boat. The, 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 be the master of my life. And the Lord Almighty will definitely come because he's been knocking at the door of your life. So what do you do? Say these prayers after me. You say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. I renounce you, you Satan, and your works in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, King of kings, Lord of Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this wonderful moment. I thank you, Lord, for your child, your children that have given their life to you. Father, you said it in your word that by no means will you cast out anyone that comes to you. The sustaining grace to finish the race will let it rest on each one of us in the name of Jesus. And I pray for anyone that is going through any form of storm right now. Father, Lord, Holy Spirit, please help the person not to get weary and get and doubt and come out from the boat. Because you in the boat, we are rest assured that it is victorious for us in the name of Jesus. And for anyone that is going through any form of problem that they, they, they think you are not there for them, Holy Spirit, please touch them, comfort them, help them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, my brother, my sisters. I'll see you very soon by God's grace. And remember, always remember this, that Jesus never leaves anyone in the boat, in the storms of life. So whatever storm you're going through, calm down. Ask the Holy Spirit, what should I do? Once he tells you, just put your mind at rest. And I know that the Lord Almighty will sustain you. Have a lovely week. And make sure you follow us on every platform. Foundation on the Soil Drop Ministry, Matthew 7 verse 25. On YouTube, if you've not subscribed, make sure you subscribe so you're able to get notification. And remember that we are starting our searching the scriptures this week on Friday. So if you know you're interested, send a message on my Skype account, which is Foundation on the Soil Drop Ministry. And I will add you to the group. Let us search the scriptures. Have a lovely week. Remember, with Jesus in the boat of your life, you've got nothing to worry about. Shalom.